In today's demo we are going to build a simple chat application uh, using uh, web sockets. Um, in uh, demos uh, prior to this one we have been using uh, ADX and uh, the XML HTTP request object for communicating with the server. Uh, however in a chat application this is really not the best thing to do because um, the client needs to ask the server um, w uh, over and over again if something new has happened. If if anyone in the, in uh, in the connected clients have have written something, and if uh, and we basically need to poll the server to get get an answer if if something has updated. So in today's um, demo, we are going to use uh, WebSockets instead uh, that. Um, will um, make it so that we will have an open stream to the server and the server will push uh, messages to us when something updates in the network and for the uh, web ser uh, websocket server we have we have set up a websocket server uh, on an address uh, you will find the address on the course web page and you will also need an API key for this chat server so if you are not a student you will have to uh, basically set up your own server uh, because the only way to get the key is to log in to the course web page and you will find the API key um, uh, to use it there. Uh, so this is not a public uh, WebSocket server unfortunately. Um, so, uh, I have also been asked to use Bind <coughs> more uh, to, 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 to show how, how you could add event listeners and binding them to a, a type, for instance. So we will do that in this demo. I will make a type called InstaChat. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, I have done some preparations. Uh, I have. Uh, written the HTML that will support this uh, assignment and uh, if we have a look we can see I have container this is where I will place my chats uh, I will be able to have multiple chats on the same page uh, and of course multiple chats in multiple uh, web browsers or web browser windows and I've made a template uh, <coughs> using the template tag. So this is a template for an individual chat. Uh, so the chat is only a div tag, uh, a text area where the user is supposed to uh, write the message and uh, a div tag for uh, each message. Uh, or <laughs> actually this is the message area. So this is where the messages will be placed and every time a new message is received we will use the inner template to render up uh, those div class message, message containing the text and the author of the message. Uh, and if we have a look at, let's see where I have that, I should just paste that in. Okay, we can do that later, how the uh, protocol is set up to the server, but we will see that as we go along. Okay, so I want to create a new type and I want to create a type insta chat. Let's do that. We'll make this a, a constructor function insta chat. <coughs> and let's export it module sports insta chat. Like that. And in the app.js, we could do uh, require and g insta chat. So, uh, so, some of you are a little bit confused about using modules. This is uh, Browserify we are using and the module, the MPN module uh, stuff, uh, same as uh, on the node server. Uh, we could, I mean, it's no need for this constructor function to be called InstaChat. Um, if, if we don't like, we could call this constructor 
like this if we like. <coughs> uh, and it will still be called, I mean, the module will be called InstaChat because that's the name of the file and we will probably uh, save it in a variable called InstaChat. So when we later on do new InstaChat, we'll look this way, but I think it's a good practice to to name the constructor function the same as the type like that. Okay, so we are going to use prototype functions just to complicate things <laughs> a bit. I mean, it's it's actually not necessary to use the prototype uh, pattern in, in 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 this assignment because I mean, how many chats will we have on a one web page? Uh, probably one. Uh, in, in some cases, maybe for for test purposes, two or three, but I mean, not more than that. So we don't need need you to use the prototype for any kind of performance issues. But we will do it anyway for good practice or for just to have some training on using them. Uh, and we will probably need some um, some functions like connect. And uh, I would argue that we will need something to send and something to receive uh, or print messages like that, something like that. Uh, when we instantiate the new chat, we want it to, to, to listen for, for new messages uh, at once uh, so we could call the connect function inside the insta chat but that will b make it so that we always will listen to uh, um, new messages when creating a chat and maybe we don't want to do that so we could leave that functionality to the calling uh, function here so we could uh, could save this uh, instance and we could do like a chat.connect. So we leave it up to the user of our module to, uh, to, to, to connect to the chat. But we maybe we should <coughs> at least protect the send message. So, so if we are not connected when we're trying to send a message, we will connect uh, automatically. Uh, so we will do that as well. Okay, so first of all, let's print this. <coughs> so every instance of InstaChat should print uh, um, uh, print the chat and uh, the text areas and stuff. So let's uh, start out by querying this template, making a copy of this div and place it inside a chat container. So we could always define that we should have a div called chat container but I think it's a better practice to 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 to, to, to take as an arg uh, uh, as a parameter uh, take the container that we want this chat to live in so when we <coughs> call a new insta chat we need to tell which container it should be printed in uh, we do that by document dot query selector query selector, and that was called chat container, right? Container. Okay, so we send in the chat container, uh, this one, <coughs> to the insta chat, so we get it here and we have somewhere to place the chat. So, okay, let's uh, clone the template. Let's get hold of the template. It's document.querySelector and it's called chat. Uh, now, <coughs> let's get the node, import the node. We do it by document.import uh, node and template then we need to use the content to get the content of the template and we want the first 
element element child and we want true because we want to uh, copy every child node of this first element child okay so we we have a copy of the chat uh, uh, div now we just need to add it to the container container dot append child and we append the chat div to the uh, the chat container something's probably wrong but let's try it out oh it seems like it actually worked we could have a look in the elements we see the div uh, container has the div chat this should be uh, have a message area with a template and it has a, sh a text area uh, I see shadow root here because I've I've, I've told the browser to, to display shadow uh, uh, objects for text areas and stuff because this text area is actually built up by a div uh, with some styling on it but normally you don't see that but I, you, you could by uh, going to settings you have this show user agent shadow doom so you can uh, see how every uh, pre-rendered HTML element is actually built up and you can actually if you like style those elements as well even though it might not be good practice to do that <coughs> okay uh, we have printed the document or uh, uh, the chat now we need stuff to happen when we we do something inside of this um, uh, text box and I will connect this so when I press enter the message will send and I will not have send button in, in, in this case maybe you should but uh, we will skip that part in, 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 in this assignment we will have a, a key press e event listening for uh, enter uh, uh, pressing enter so let's do that we take our chat div we uh, add event listen add an event listener uh, what should we listen for key press and want something to happen when we do that and we want to get hold of the event so we could know which key has been pressed okay how do we know if it's an empty key okay uh, of course we could read up in the documentation but we could also use the, the debugger so if we debug like this and I mark that and I press enter the debugger pauses uh, and now we have this event information we could have a look at uh, we have it here event we see it's a keyboard event <coughs> you see that we have like alt key uh, if, if some keys are pressed uh, um, we can see this line here char code so this is the character code for the enter uh, um, key uh, we also have the key code which is actually the same in this case I don't remember the difference or if it's actually that one is deprecated maybe I think it is the key code that is we are supposed to use we have a key identifier as well that's enter uh, maybe if you really want to cross browser functionality you need to read up on this and see okay car code which browser support that and which support the key code i will go with key code in this case <coughs> But if you're really cross browser into cross browser making this cross browser, you need to, to check up on that. So let's try it out event.key code uh, equals 13. So if it's 13, then we know enter was pressed. Uh, if it's not enter, we just let it be. We just don't care about because every key press will be registered by the key press so if I press S or D or whatever this function will fire um, and we are only interested in, in listening on 13 so we will leave it at that what will we do then uh, probably we will send a message we could also uh, listen for enter 
Okay. This could be good to have a comment because it's not sure that you remember that 13 is, is the enter key. Um, we should probably send a message. We should as well uh, empty text area and we should uh, prevent default. Let's do that event dot prevent default because otherwise the enter will be registered in the text area. Uh, and if we first empty the text area, uh, then this function will return and the enter key will go through, so to speak. So the, the, the next, the, the thing that the user will see is a text area with enter, uh, one enter uh, or blank line uh, inserted. We, uh, we, we can have a look at that. So, how do we uh, empty the text area? Oh, well, we know that uh, event.target is the text area, right? But how do we get the text from the text area and how do we uh, set it to null or empty? So, let's use the debugger once again. We stop the debugger inside of the text area. We write some stuff that we will recognize, press enter, uh, we read up on the event once again, we find the target, which is the target message area, this one, and then we just could have a look to see if we find our text somewhere. And we will probably a bit lower, I think we will see it right here. So the value of the text area is the the text we have written. Great, then we know that. Event.target <coughs> dot value equals empty. So we will, in this case, I will only empty, I won't send, uh, send it just yet, but we will empty the text area. Uh, the debugger is gone, refresh. I write something in the presenter. Oh, it actually worked. No, I had prevent default. If we remove prevent default, do the same thing. Do it like that and press enter. You see what's happening is that the enter uh, or the, the blank line will go through and we will start off the next iteration with one enter sign and we need to back, back off. So in this case we want to prevent the fault. Um, okay, great. Uh, now we should send a message and we should call this send message function. So we let's just do that. Okay, this dot send message. And we will of course send in the event dot target dot value to send a text. So this send message will take take the text to send to the server. Great. Now we have a problem. If we try this out as it is write something and press enter we will probably as you see here get an error uncaught a type error this send message is not a function what why is send message not a function we have it down here this dot send message and this is because we are inside an event handler function and this inside of this function will not reference the uh, the, the type that we are working on the insta chat Instead, this will reference the colleague of this function, that is the chat div. So this is actually the same as uh, uh, the chat uh, div. Um, we have uh, that we that we added the key pressed event on. I, I see see an error or error error, but uh, maybe we should actually query the text area here so we only list some key press in the text area maybe okay we i mean the order of the events will fix this for us in this case and event.target will always uh, point to the text area because this is where we we press enter we cannot actually press enter inside a div tag anyway so this will work but this will query the chat div and not the type to be able to, to, to make this 
point to the instance chat uh, instance. Uh, I mean, a constructor function, you know, works like this. So the last thing happening in a constructor function when it's called by with new is that it will return this. So this inside instachat is our um, reference to the instance being created. If you like to write ugly code, or yeah, I do as well sometimes, you could do something like this and you will see it all over the place, all over the internet anyway. You could do something like this, so we set the self to this and then we could use self inside of this um, function and everything will probably work out just fine. We don't want to do that, we want to use this uh, and we don't want to use this self. Uh, you could, there's nothing wrong with it, but there is another way and that's what I'm set out to show you. So we could bind this function, uh, rebind it to 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 another um, uh, another scope, and we you do that by using the bind function. So this is the function, right? And on that function, we call bind with what we want the scope to be in. In this case, we want it to be this because this outside of this function query is the same as this. So those are the same because they are in the same scope and we call this function uh, with bind and bind to this. So now this inside of this function will uh, point to the same thing as with this outside of the function and not on the chat div. Uh, this actually, what this will do is it will return a new function uh, uh, called a bound function. We don't need to, to worry about that right now, but that is what's, what is happening um, um, behind the scenes. Let's reload. And seems to work because we don't get an error anyway. We, we actually don't do much in the send message. Sending message. And we could actually add a text as well. So let's have a console sending the message. Do do do. And it seems to to work like we, we want it to. Okay, so we have hooked up more or less uh, um, the events for sending messages. Now we need to connect this to the server. And the server is on an address that I will get in just a couple of seconds because I don't have it in my mind. I don't remember it, or do I? I think I maybe do. We have it here. So the address to this socket server looks something like that. Um, and when we connect uh, to a WebSocket server, we do it by just uh, calling new on, on, on the WebSocket type. Uh, like this. New WebSocket. Um, we call it with a URL, and the URL is this one. As a, st whoops. As a string like that. We could also add a protocol if we like. We don't need that, so we will just skip it. Skip it. Uh, if you want a custom protocol, say that you have multiple applications using the same WebSocket server. You could define different protocols so that your games will use one protocol and your chat service will use another. But in this case, we use this chat server for everything, this channel for ev everything. Um, so we also need to save this socket because we will need it when we are sending messages and, and, and stuff. So in this case, we will add it to this uh, and we will call it socket and we will add it like that. Uh, I will also, for good manner, do something like this in the beginning. 
so we have the socket. Uh, of course, we could define this as a uh, getter or setter or uh, how we like to do it. But I do it the simplest possible way right now. Um, okay, so we connect to the web socket like this. Um, we Um, we could be quite okay. Let, let's 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 uh, so we we do it like this uh, to start with, and what, then we will send a message as well. Uh, and sending a message, you do it by this dot socket dot send. So it's a quite a simple uh, thing to do. Uh, we could set a, a, any text we like here, uh, but uh, the protocol is uh, defined like this. Um, and, and this is just, we have have said that, okay, we are going to use this WebSocket in a certain way, and we're going to use it like this. We will have a type, whoops, a type called um, a message when we are sending messages. So we could add different types if we have different data to send. And we have the data that is uh, actually the text, this one, the, 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 the thing we want to send. What is it because I don't do it like that, maybe? Yeah. Uh, what we also need to... Uh, um, uh, to add to this uh, object is the username. So we will have a username. I will just make use of my name like that. This will, in an application, you will probably be able to set this through a menu or something. So you can change your username. We have a channel that should be uh, provided if we spell it right. Uh, I will just leave it empty, so we will use kind of a default channel uh, for this chat. We could divide our chats into different channels if we like. And we have a key that is the API key. So the API key, I don't want to show that in the recording. And therefore, I will uh, make a config object, uh, a config object that will have the API key and actually will have the socket uh, address as well. So we don't need to, to put it right in our code like this. Uh, so when we're using, when we're doing those kind of config objects, it could be the simplest way is to just do it in a JSON file. So we don't even need to do it as, make it as an own type. We, we just put it as an object in a config.json. So I add a config.json uh, or, and in this config.json, this will only be a simple JSON object uh, with an address and a an key, like that. And I will place the API key here. So let's move the address to here, whoops, like that, and the key, blah, blah, blah. Uh, now, instead of doing it when we connect, instead of uh, making it like this, we could just do a global for this module global config object. Of course, we could place it somewhere else as well. Require. And we will require the config.json so this config will be this object. And now we could just print it like config.address. Did I spell address right? No, I spelled it in Swedish. Uh, okay, so we get the address here and the API key will be the config.api. No, key. Uh, I will now Pause the recording. I will paste the API key inside of the, this, and I will not show you how to. Okay, done. So the key is in place in this config.json file. Not shown, I hope. Uh, okay, let's restart. Reload. 
and nothing is wrong yet, but fail to execute send on WebSocket, one argument required, but only zero present. Yeah, in, to send, we need to send in the data as well, of course, that we want to send. And we can't send it like this because this is a JavaScript object and we need to send it as text. Uh, hence, we need to, uh, to make this uh, a JSON object and we do it by JSON stringify. So we take the data object, we stringify it, and we add it to the uh, to the channel. Reload, send, sending message. Mm -hmm. uh, it almost looks at it as it's work uh, as it is working, and that surprises me. Have we called connect? Thought we hadn't, but maybe we did. Yeah, we actually connected to the server. However, uh, this will work, and it will work because the user is slow. Um, I am slow. So we, we start the application, we connect to the chat, and because the, the, the user is so slow, the connection will be up and I will send a message. Uh, spamming the chat right now for everyone else uh, using this. Uh, um, application but if i was to do something like this chat dot send say i want to send a, uh, something else just after connecting like this in code not depending on the user if i do that we will have a problem because it says chat send is not defined no it's not it's called send message so I called send message right after uh, I connected. Then we get a problem. Fail to execute send on WebSocket still in connecting state. And that is because uh, this is an asynchronous uh, command. So the new WebSocket will not wait until we have a connection and return the socket object. It will return the socket object and we'll, we'll do the handshake with the server. And after a while, an event will trigger uh, that is called uh, open. Um, so we can't actually do anything until we have an open connection. Um, and this is important. So we need to get around this. Should we have like a check and, and, and be in a loop trying to, to wait or something like that or add a timer that waits 50 milliseconds? No, we should not. We should do this in another way. In this case, I will. we could do this by, by adding callbacks and stuff, but in this, way, uh, in this uh, assignment, I will actually once again use promises. So I will create uh, this connect will, uh, in my uh, application, return a promise. Uh, so uh, we could call connect, and when we are connected, a uh, promise will be resolved, and we can send our message. So let's see how that could look in the simplest of forms. So when cre cre creating a promise, we do new promise. That the promise takes two uh, takes um, uh, 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 a function that has two arguments. In this case, parameters resolve and reject, and those are function callbacks. So, in this promise, if I do resolve like that. Uh, we say that okay, we are fine. Our our promise have resolved. We are finished. Or if we call reject, something went wrong. So we will add this code inside of uh, inside of the promise, and we will return from this connect. We will return the new promise created, like this. So now we need to add an event handler to. Uh, or wait, before we do that, we will get a problem. So I save, I do nothing more than this, we reload and we will get another problem. Cannot read the property send of null. Uh, that was not the problem I expected. Uh, send of null, uh, yeah, 
anyhow, anything, something has happened down here because this is now null. It's not a socket like it was. It was a socket which haven't, hadn't gotten a connection before. Now it's just null. And why is it null? Yeah, because this dot socket is not referring to the InstaChat. This is not referring to InstaChat anymore. In the same way that it was up here when we had a problem with this, we have the same problem down here because this is a callback function and this inside of this function will, this will run in another scope, probably window, I guess. Uh, so we cannot do it like this. We need to bind once again and tell that this inside of this function so it should uh, point to the same thing as this outside of this function. Let's reload and we cannot execute it still in connecting stage. So we are back where we were. Okay, now, uh, how do we know, know that this socket is open? Well, we could add the event listener uh, for open. So when open is called, when everything is okay with the connection. So inside of here, we know that, okay, everything is all right. All right. Uh, and now we could actually resolve because we know that the connection is, is up and running. So we call resolve with uh, returning this dot socket. We could, I mean, return the socket as well. So uh, we don't need to do this, but we could. Um, so we do, we could provide, provide some data to, to the function calling uh, using the promise. But once again, this is a callback function pointing to the socket object. So this inside of uh, this object calls to the socket object and not to the InstaChat. We could of course bind, or in this case, we could actually just return this because this is the socket object. Uh, so but the problem with this approach is when you read this code you will instantly think that okay this this is the InstaChat right or is it not or what is this and you need to f start thinking about it so if you're using this types and this kind of object oriented thinking with using this as in, in other programming languages are called a class maybe you should actually bind like this and doing this dot socket even if it's unnecessary just to make it clear or, or easier to read okay so when this socket is up and running uh, our connect promise will resolve let's see how to use it so now this connect uh, function returns the promise and because it returns the promise we could use then and then will be called when the uh, when the promise uh, resolves. So when we have connection, and this takes a callback, and what we get here is actually we know that this is the socket that we get from this callback, and now we could inside of whoop, uh, inside of this function we could call chat dot send message hello like that because now we know that this code will be run when the socket is connected and 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 if, if you look at only this code it, it makes sense so okay chat dot connect connect to the chat and then we when we are connected then do this so it's quite easy to read uh, and follow the code using promises oh let's hope it works then sending message hello so seems like it worked anyway we don't actually know we, we don't receive any any answer or look at the answer received but we can do it like this perfect fine okay and now if we just write something we will send the message and it will probably work just as well so reload we're sending the hello message i'm sending hello again and that also works 
However, now we leave a lot up to the user. If the user forgets to connect to the server, say we just instantiate the server like this, and we try it out right now, reload, try to send something, cannot send property send of null because we have no socket object, we haven't connected to the server. So maybe we should in the send message make sure that we are connected. Right? So we should do the same thing before sending. We should do something like this dot connect uh, dot then. So when we are connected, what will we do? We will send like this. Now if we want to, we could skip this part because we get the socket from the connect function. Uh, so we minimize it a little bit. Okay, let's try it out. Reload, try to send, sending message, sending message. However, what we are doing now is that every time we try to send a message, we will create a new web socket. So probably if we are looking uh, on the code and look at the network stuff we're looking at the web server yeah so we have actually two web sockets connected right now so for every message i write we start a new socket and this completely ruins the the, the good thing with web sockets it's that we are opening one connection to the server and then we could have a lot of discussions over those connections this will also make it so that if the service says some, anything, we will get three copies of that message, and four and five and six for every message we add. So this is not a good practice. Uh, we need some kind of check inside of connect if we are already connected to a socket. If we are, we should resolve immediately. If we are not, we should create the socket. So let, let's add a, a test for that. So if this dot socket so actually if it's if it's something and this dot socket uh, and to check if it's connected or not we could i think okay let's stop the debugger actually i think i know how we could do it but let's have a look anyway okay we're not connected write something try to connect this is the first time right so we try it again okay so we already have a connection open and if we look at this dot socket uh, <coughs> we could see that we have something called ready state uh, and ready state is one when we are connected so if if we have a socket uh, oh where am i here if we if this socket isn't null and the ready state equals one, then we know that we are already connected. In this case, we will just resolve immediately this dot socket and we will return. We do not want to continue uh, to, to create a new socket. So now we get it a check if, if we are already connected just resolve immediately so our send message function could use this this dot connect then and we don't need to worry about creating multiple connections if we already have one <coughs> so i'm trying to send some garbage we'll look at the network and we see that we only have one socket up and running perfect uh, when using promises we could use this for error handling uh, and if I w were to write in a false address um, we're just adding some oh actually let's instead of let's do it like this so if we add a rubbish address like 
that and we try it out we will probably get an unhandled error somewhere WebSocket connection to hello failed error during WebSocket handshake unexpected response code 200 so something went went wrong and the reason why i logged sending messages because this log was outside of the then so if i move it inside of there and something went wrong it will not actually send because then uh, this function will not resolve because open will not ever be called and this will throw something it will uh, throw an error and we could catch that error with a try try my god um and we could reject with that error <coughs> like that now it will probably not be unhandled like the WebSocket failed error in establishing connection uh, so if I were to catch I mean we have if if we connect uh, when connected we do this and if something is wrong we catch uh, the same way and we could we get the error and we could something went wrong and we could give the error object as well hopefully we will get that we did not so mr chat dot 40 yeah, I thought it would actually throw an error. Okay, let's see if we have an error object instead. Do I get the... Yep, uh, and we get the event. Do, 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 do. do we get some information about what went wrong? Um, type error. Not sure if we could get anything more than the error actually maybe we could somewhere hmm. uh, let's just reject this uh, with a custom error Could not connect. Uh, okay, let's try it out. So, but with this one throws, it looks like. Something went wrong, could not connect. So we get that error anyway. And it looks like we don't need that try, right? Just like that. <laughs> Error handling isn't my strong side, as you see. Oh well, we handle the error anyway. Uh, by using the event listener on the error. Uh, <coughs> uh, we could be glad we did that as well. Anyway, and it still works when we have the right address. Um, right, okay, we need to listen for events as well. Um, and 
we could actually in the connection do this in the connection uh, set up the event listener for for when we get the message it's the similar way as whoops as this one but instead we listen to message um, so we will just set up the event listener for message when we get a message uh, we will call the print message uh, on this dot print message and this will work because we did bind uh, in two steps <laughs> from the promise and all the way up so this will point to the right uh, object and we will print and what will we print well we will um, uh, print the message data uh, but we need to parse it first because it's in JSON format. So we will just create a variable called message. We will JSON parse. Uh, we get the event dot data. Uh, so when we get a message from from a WebSocket, we get the data in the event dot data uh, 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 um, uh, property. Okay. And then we could just send a message to the print message function. So we send a whole message to the print message function and we will handle the rest there. Uh, but remember how, how the messages looked. We have this type message and we only want to listen on type messages. So, or we could try it like this first. We will add that code later. So in the print message, we will take the message <coughs> and we will do something uh, with this message. Uh, so what I want to do is to uh, query the template inside of my chat div. So I need to be able to get a hold of this chat div. Um, because this don't have an ID, I can't query it uh, in the DOM. Because if we have multiple chats, we will have multiple divs like this. And I don't know which one belongs to my chat so we need to save this reference and so instead of doing it the local variable we will add it to uh, the insta chat object uh, then we need to have the same thing there like that and now we could use this dot chat div uh, here uh, so inside of this we have a template we only have one so we could do a query selector we don't have an id for that one and we do a query selector all we get all templates and we get the first one because we only have one and we call that template so this will give us this template inside of our div um, okay so let's create a message div uh, document.import node uh, template.content.firstElementChild and true as well because we want a deep copy. So we have the message div. Uh, now we need to place this message div inside of this div called messages so if we look in in, in the browser <coughs> it will look like this we have the chat container we have our chat and we have this div called messages and we want to place our messages inside of this div so we need to get a hold of that one we will do it like this chat div dot query selector selector and we get the message area messages it's called and uh, because it's a class we need to do it like that we only have one so we'll be fine and on that one we could append directly append the message div we want the latest message to be at the bottom so appending will work just fine just fine 
<coughs> the message div. Okay, so the message div actually don't contain anything, so we need to uh, to add uh, the text and the author. And once again, if we look at this, we have the p tag with the class text and the p tag with the class author. So we need to populate those two on the message div. So message message div dot query very selector uh, text take the first text punct text content please do not use in HTML in this case because if we get some dangerous code from the server we don't have any validation right now so we will just put that code right out there if we're using in a HTML this code will probably execute uh, and we do not want that so we use text content um, we get the message uh, the data from the message objects called data okay and we do the same thing with the author but this one was called username in uh, in the message Okay, so every time, whoa, error, chat div is not defined, 11, this dot. Okay, so I try to, uh, later, as testing. Bam! We connected to the server, we got a message from the server, and then it says later this testing. Uh, so this message is not a message, it's just a ping from the server. Uh, and we will get this quite often, and we will also get, you see, the server, we will get something called a heartbeat. So every one, once every 30 or 40 seconds, the server will send a heartbeat signal, keeping all connection up connections open. I, I'm not sure that the, the client will close the connection after one minute, but I know that the proxy server we are using at the server will close down this connection after one minute if it's idle. So every now and then the server will send a heartbeat. And this is not a type message, it's just a, a custom uh, type. I think it's actually heartbeat. So you see this pings coming in all the time. We don't want them. Uh, so now when we uh, connect, uh, get a message uh, in this function, we need to, to first check that the message is the right type. Uh, so let's do that. So if uh, this message.type equals message, then we print the message else we just ignore the message we don't do anything with it uh, so this will probably make it so that this will work a little better hello anyone there let's see if any students are up and running and uh, uh, doing something on this project. Uh, we could get rid of the console log, I guess, as well, right now. So this one we don't need. Um, this is basically it. Now we have a working chat application. We could also, if we like, try to create a new instance so we have multiple instances so we call it this chat one and chat one we could actually automatically when we connect to that one we will send a message hello and we reload now you see we got two two chats and it looks like both said hello but they didn't the last one said hello and when the last one said hello the first one got that message and now you see how fast uh, web sockets are in those kinds of applications. If we open another one, another window like this, uh, go into localhost, you see when I write something here, it is fast and press enter. I mean it's 
instantaneously uh, in, on every other chat. Uh, of course we have latency, uh, but it's a, a matter of milliseconds, not seconds. So this is, WebSockets works really well for this kind of application. Um, okay, what's left to do? Of course, styling. We, we need to style this so we, we, we get a nice view and output and this is the author. Maybe we should add some kind of timestamp as well so we know when the message came. Um, maybe we need some kind of scroll bar for the messages so this one won't push us down all the time. But it's all a matter of CSS. So uh, with, a, with a little bit of CSS love, we could, could do a lot uh, with this uh, special assignment. But I think that's basically it. Uh, not much code. Of course, we have a lot of fine tuning to do. We could add a lot of oh, comments. <laughs> uh, I've not been very good at commenting this code, but that will take some time. So I skip that part for the demo. Uh, we could add some error handling maybe uh, to handle errors, um, but but it works uh, anyway. So a little example of how to do this, how to use bind, how to, to work with promises um, in this case to get a more readable code. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Good luck.